Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about my complete lack of willpower. There are certain times of the day, depending on mood and activity level, that I should not go online. Look at Facebook, look at eBay, because I'm going to find something and I'm gonna buy it. Now this is something I have been looking for for a long time. I saw it come up on Facebook. It looked like it was in fantastic condition from somebody I trust. So I figured, okay. It's one of those that you really wanna get and have in your collection. So this looks like a good choice. Maybe I spent a few more dollars than I wanted to. Uh, shipping is a pain after all these days. But at the moment, and I haven't opened it yet. At the moment, I'm pretty happy. So let's crack into the box and see if I have buyer's remorse. So my interests have been changing a little, uh, you know, based on things like the uh, Reading T1. I'm a little more interested in the LTI era of Lionel, and I've started looking into some of that. The nice thing is, is that they're still pre-technology for the most part. So. Some of them still have the Pullmore motor and a mechanical E unit, which makes me happy. That's an era, I guess, early LTI. That's just, I find very interesting. Uh, this is not LTI, this is MPC, but I'm kind of getting to the end of the items from MPC that I was really interested in. I mean, there are a couple I'll keep an eye out for, and if I see them for a good price, maybe I'll jump on them. But for the most part, I've gotten the things I want, like the Blue Comet, the Crescent, the Chicago and Alton, you know, and I love these sets, but they're all the same engine, you know, just different colors. So some of the stuff from the LTI is just a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of the stuff that I have. So in the future, that might be the way that I start going. I mean, I don't even know how much stuff there is that I would be interested in that would fall into my price range, but whatever, that's what makes the hobby fun. But that's enough of that. Let's get back to this box in my lap. It's an MPC engine that I've wanted for a long time. I've seen it a couple times at shows. It's usually too expensive. And when I say too expensive, I mean over $200. I, I don't want to spend that much for any of these MPC Hudson type engines that are pretty much all the same mold. So when, I, when I've seen it for 200, I've just, I've walked away from it. It's just not that important. Unfortunately, you know, shipping made the price go up on this one still less so it's it's a balancing act you know sometimes should i have waited to find it for sub 100 dollars maybe but was i going to find it for that in good condition probably not let's stop babbling and let's look at this thing because that's really what we're all interested in it doesn't have the box but that's okay because i'm not really interested in the long-term collectability value of it as much as just wanting to have it and running it for myself. Now what's really important to me with these engines is that they're cosmetically in good shape because I can fix the mechanical stuff usually. This one definitely needs a lube. I think the wheels are straight. The shell's in good condition. The handrails are a little on the rusty side. Looks like it's in nice shape. All right Dave, enough of the uh, Hubbub. What is it? It's the 8006 Silver Shadow. And that's just an awesome combination. The dark silver and the black. I just really, really like the look of it. Now, always keep in mind that something, regardless of what it is, train or anything else, always looks a lot better in the picture than it does in reality, which is why buying at train shows is so nice. You pick the stuff up, you look at it, you inspect it, you know. Uh, this is in good shape. It, it just needs a good cleaning. But then everything of mine needs a good cleaning. For the moment, I'll just put a couple of drops of oil around the armature shaft, around the gears on the side, on the axles, and we'll call that it. One thing he said in the listing was that the tender was damaged, and it's just the pickup. So that's fine. I can fix that. I'm pretty sure I have another one of these sitting somewhere. Now, looking at the bottom of it, it's pretty clear that the foam is destroyed or someone tried to replace it at some point. 
but I'm not gonna throw this right on the tracks without taking it apart and taking a look at it. Always good to check, but looks like somebody already did a repair on it at some point. It's up on some double-sided foam that looks pretty old at this point. Uh, the speaker's loose, but that should pop right back into place. And there you go. This side's broken off, so I've got this side in place, and then I'm using the pickups to kind of hold it up on the other side. Now the wheels are kind of dirty. Okay, they're very dirty. So I don't know if it'd even pick up electricity, but at least this way it should be safe to run until I feel like taking it apart again. So initial out of the box impression is that with a good cleaning, this thing's gonna be great. Now let's just see if it actually runs. It's always the kind of make it or break it moment. The unit's cycling. Definitely needs a cleaning and a lubricating. Let's see if the sound of static works. Sort of. I wouldn't say the whistle works. That's all right, I'm a huge fan of that anyway. This is the Lehigh Valley string of hoppers that I was pulling with a Williams switcher. So let's see if this guy can do it. Well, it's trying, but I don't think it's fair to test an engine with this much weight when it seems like it hasn't been running quite some time. And the tender's too light, it kind of tipped over and shorted. So let's try something else. Okay, it works. It definitely needs a cleaning and servicing. Maybe repair the wire for the pickup on the tender, and I'd say it's good to go. Now, these tenders are really light. I much prefer the later cast tenders. I might swap the trucks off of this onto that one if I can. I believe I did that with my Blue Comet and it worked great and it looks good because all the cars have six wheel trucks. So the tender having the four wheel trucks just didn't do it for me. So having these six wheel trucks on that tender, I think looks pretty good. So I might do that to this one as well. So I'm gonna run it for a little bit, see how it improves after a little bit of running. Uh, the smoke works, the sound works, the light works. It looks like it's rolling pretty smooth. Uh, the actual mechanism needs some cleaning and lubing, but that's pretty much standard. So let's check it out. Wrong way. I just said a whole lot of great stuff. Really nice wrap up, but I didn't hit record. So let's try this again. I am very happy with this engine. It definitely needs a solid cleaning. Take a closer look at some of the wiring, clean up the tender, maybe add those other wheels, add some weight, just out of the box. When it's obvious it's been sitting for a while, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of lubrication under there. I'm very happy with the way it's working. And it's, I think one of the better looking engines from that time period. I mean, I love the blue on the blue Comet, but that engine 
looks like they painted it by dumping buckets of paint on it. This one has a real nice finish to it. The black's still shiny. The silver's got just enough of a luster to it. Quite a good looking engine. I mean, no, I don't have the box or the display, but I wasn't going to display it anyway. Not sure what I'm going to run with it. Maybe freight for now. I wouldn't mind a passenger set that looked good with this. Maybe Williams has a set that would look good with this. It's always nice to make a purchase and be happy with it. But hopefully I'll have time soon to open this up and really clean it out. And, and then we'll see how it runs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.